Hello, and welcome back to Concepts Smarter Sketching. It's Claudine from the Concepts team, and in this tutorial, I'll be showing you how I would use concepts to draw the unofficial fan art of Disney and Pixar's The Good Dinosaur. Concepts is an iPad sketching app that we built to be an intelligent tool for designers, makers, and for all types of avid artists out there. This particular tutorial is super exciting for me because it's the first time I'm using the Apple Pencil and Concepts. And I gotta tell you, I'm really loving the ergonomics of this slim design. Okay, before I start any sketch and concepts, I like to configure my settings. Some of my favorites are using the lightweight paper color, the infinite canvas, and searching on active layer only. Then I like to favorite the tools I'll be using the most for my sketch. Since I'll be doing a line drawing, I'll be choosing a couple pen tools, the selection, and eraser. My first pen is a mid-tone kind of blue, and it's for the initial layout of the sketch. Traditionally, designers use blue colored pencils for light outlines of their sketch because it's easier to use a black pen over it for cleaning up lines and for bolder strokes. I just want to quickly point out that I can use the Apple Pencil along all the edges of the iPad Pro. This is amazing, especially when I get so focused on my sketching. Okay, I'm going to start by using Split View to open Safari and to Google image The Good Dinosaur. I really like that first one. Arlo and Spot's friendship are clear and they're in their natural environment. My technique for first laying out a sketch are that my first lines are the overall directions of the characters. Like the direction of Arlo's head, his neck, and his body. His main body is a bulbous shape. Um, I'm just selecting my last stroke here and adjusting it to the right size and direction. Then onto his legs. It's his most animated part in this sketch in my opinion. I love his awkward legs and the exaggerated kneecaps. I'm closely using the reference picture to get the proportions and positioning of his legs just right. He's got two of his legs in the front of the composition here, and the other two are behind his body. His feet or paws are these super rounded shapes. I've noticed that in Arlo's character design, he has no hard angles at all. It's most likely to correlate his friendliness and good-natured personality. And I'm just selecting his leg so I can adjust the angle that it bends. Oh, uh, it seems I made his tummy too low. I'm just going to select it and rotate it to a higher position. Okay, that's better. Now for his neck. It starts thick, then it thins out closer to his head. It looks like he's turning his head behind him to look at Spot. It's so cute. His snout is funny. It looks fatter where his nostrils are, and it slightly narrows in towards his eyes. Mm -hmm. 
And now for his tail. Since it's cut off in the reference, let's find another one just for a general reference of his tail proportions. I like this one. So back to our first reference picture. And now it's Spot's turn. He's in a sitting dog position on Arlo's hump right here, looking up happily at Arlo. This sitting position for Spot is perfect for his character, because even though he's a human in the film, he's more of a loving and loyal puppy, and the dinosaurs are portrayed as a smarter species. Spot's hair is probably the wildest part of his character design. It's the essence of him being a Neanderthal boy. Okay, since Spot is smaller here, he's a bit easier to lay out. And for the nature scape in the background, I'm just sketching very light, messy, but stylistic lines for the mountains, the clouds, and the trees. Okay, so we're done with the layout, so let's go back to layers and name this the layout layer. While we're in the layers interface, let's select the entire thing with this arrow button up here, and then let's lower the opacity of the entire layer so I can start sketching the refined lines. Let's go back to our new layer above the layout layer. And this time, let's use a black pen. I'm starting with his main body here by using the ellipse precision tool. Within the same ellipse shape, I can draw multiple strokes so they all follow the same ellipse. It's a little more organic on Arlo's hump, so I'll break up the perfect ellipse up here. For his neck, I'm using my favorite technique in concepts. I'll draw my stroke first as precise as possible, then I select it to adjust its smoothness for a cleaner stroke effect. For a lot of this tutorial, I'll be using this technique repetitively. I believe that Arlo's legs are so animated and clumsy looking because of his hesitant and timid personality. So, watch for a lot of his emotions shown in his leg in the movie. Arlo has a long neck because he is an Apatosaurus. He's also an herbivore, so he only eats plants.
just turning off snap here real quick so I can adjust it better. Okay, this last part on Arlo is to define his shape. These are contour lines, and I like the technical aesthetic it adds. Plus, it helps us understand his shape. I'm just repeatedly using the ellipse precision tool for his contours, since he's a pretty rounded character. And I'm naming this layer Arlo. Okay, for a spot, let's go back to a thicker black pen like I did with Arlo. And let's just start going over all his lines. Spot's dog-like mannerisms are so well done that everyone will probably end up loving him. He's pretty much Arlo's loyal puppy. Hmm. For his facial features, let's use a thinner stroke. I want to keep his smile sloppy but wholehearted. So I'm making it a little bit crooked. And his eyes. He's happily looking back at Arlo. And my favorite, his crazy hair. Spot's teeth are also rounded here. I'm just naming this layer Spot, and then let's shade his eyes and mouth in black. Let's quickly go back to Arlo's layer just to shade in his nose and eyes. And for our last layer, it'll be to darken our background. Let's start with the grass. Then let's ground Arlo with some lines beneath his feet. And with a slightly lower opacity, let's draw over the background. I really liked that squiggly line look. It really helps separate the background from Arlo and Spot. And I'm naming this the background layer. And we're done! I hope you enjoyed and learned from our good dinosaur tutorial. If you would like a copy of this drawing so that you could color and render over it, just let us know. If you could share your finished drawings, we'd also love to see and share them. Please give us a like and leave comments below for any questions or thoughts. Thanks so much for watching and see you on our next sketch.